Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Paul Thompson coming to you from West St. Olaf Lutheran Church and East St. Olaf Lutheran Church, and I ask God's blessings on you as you watch and as we worship together by means of video. As uh, most of the members of the two congreg congregations should be aware, we are still uh, um, not having in-person worship now through the month of January. Uh, the councils will continue to watch the situations around us and make decisions that are appropriate as time goes by. Um, that being said, rejoicing in the good news that God and sinners are reconciled in Christ, let us, be, let us confess our need of forgiveness. God of everlasting love, we confess that we have lived in captivity to the fear of death. By our actions and by our neglect, we have fallen short of your good and gracious will. Free us from anxiety and distraction, cast out our sin and enter in. Give us a new birth of hope as we welcome a child born to save, Christ the Lord. Amen. The angels of God proclaim to us the birth of hope and joy and peace to God's people on earth. For the sake of the Savior, who is Christ the Lord, who lived and died and rose for us, God forgives our sins and delights to call us his beloved children. Amen. Our opening hymn, then, is Angels from the Realms of Glory. You may find it if you have one of the green hymnals with you at number 50, green book number 50. If you have a red hymnal, it is number 275. birth of our Savior Jesus Christ, word made flesh, and born of Mary, may that grace be with you all. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you created light that we might live, and you illumine our world with your beloved Son. By your Spirit, comfort us in all darkness, and turn us toward the light of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes to us from the first chapter of the book of Ephesians, where Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be homely and holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things through his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, may live in, for the praise of his glory. In him also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked by the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Thus ends our first reading. Our gospel is from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glorious of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Thus ends the readings. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. What would a Christmas pageant based on the Gospel of John look like? If you follow John's account of Christmas, it would be a really great benefit to budget-conscious churches because you wouldn't need very much. You wouldn't need robes or crowns. You wouldn't need shepherd's crooks or shepherd's robes, angels, wings, anything like that. You wouldn't even need actors, really. All you would need is a single candle. The church would be bare and dark, the chancel stripped, the pulpit taken off, the chairs, the flowers, the communion table, everything that's usually up there would be gone. All you need would be one small insignificant table on which would sit a single unlit candle. The worshipers would file in and sit for a very long time. They would sit long enough to begin to feel uneasy at the silence and even of the dark. At long last, one person would march solemnly in and without a word, light that one candle. That is what John gives us as a description of Christmas. And it doesn't sound very much like Christmas, does it? That's why the John passage isn't associated by many people with Christmas. It doesn't have the same charm and warmth as the stories told by Matthew and by Luke. But John's account tells us much more explicitly what Christmas really means, what it really is, and why it is so incredibly important to all people. It comes down to one phrase, and the word became flesh and lived among us. Jesus being among us is the true meaning of Christmas. Jesus coming down to us is the whole story of Christmas. And that is why we Christians still sing about Jesus and his coming, still talk about him, talk about his birth, even two weeks after the rest of the world has moved on and gone on to other things. Or not quite two weeks, but close enough. We Christians are unique among peoples of the world that we believe our God has been among us, one with us in body and in our world. For Jews and Muslims, God is above us looking down from heaven, shining his light through words of prophets and patriarchs. For us, for we Christians, God is one of us, part of our world, giving us his light directly. It's like someone trapped down in a dark hole somewhere. If you want to give them some light, you can take a flashlight and shine it down on them, and that might be of some help. But even better might be to lower the flashlight down to them so they can have the light among themselves and perhaps even find their way out of the hole. 
in Stephen Harrigan's novel, The Gates of the Alamo. The character Edmund remembers his mother. She died in childbirth while he was still a very young child. But he remembers one week before that event, his mother said something to him. She said, I will tell you a secret. You are splendid. That was her message to her son, one he remembered all of his days. Now, some people, because they are raised in a kind of a church culture that was always criticizing people for all they do wrong and all the terrible things they make, or because they go to church and the pastor screaming from the pulpit and pounding his hand down, interpret God as an angry God. Their impression of God is formed by what they see around them, and that sort of a message, that sort of an impression is very long-lasting for a lot of people. They come to feel that God is judging them and perhaps even hates them. But the more exciting and freeing and empowering belief is that God, as uh, Paul says to the Ephesians, destined us for adoption as his children. For those who worry when they think about God, those who are afraid of God, those who think God is looking down on them and judging them, they need to have a different picture. They need to picture God walking through an orphanage and stopping, pointing right at them and saying, I believe you are splendid. I choose you for my child. That is why God came into the world. He made us. He claimed us. He loves us. And he wasn't going to let a little thing like our sins get in the way of being with us always. He was going to give us, his splendid children, his light to drop it down to us, into our world, into the hole that we live in. God could have sent his light into the world as an angel, human-like, but not really human. But we humans are splendid enough in God's eyes that God's light came to be one of us. We are precious to God. We are special. We are worth God's going to any extreme. But around us is darkness. The hospitals are still full of people in the darkness of illness, we have a tremendous plague all around us. We are hoping that we don't get it, and we are praying for those who do have it. Hills and forests and jungles all around are full of people perpetuating the darkness of war. Prisons are full of people who have brought the darkness of all kinds of crimes. Darkness even falls on Earth itself as humanity scrapes out every resource in an effort to feed, clothe, house, and transport ourselves. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness is not yet banished. And yet, because the light is here, we have hope and we can know joy. We know God has sent the light into the world in Jesus, whom we call the Christ. We know that the light of God's love and God's real presence in the world defeats all darkness. That light shines in prisons where some lives do change for the better. That light shines in hospitals where many people are healed. That light shines in war-torn areas where peace workers provide food and shelter to war refugees and help rebuild destroyed homes. That light shines wherever people make decisions to consume less, to conserve more, and to think about the world around us in the way they live. We can shine lights, and sometimes we're the only ones who can shine lights. One man was having a very bad day on the golf course. Usually he was a good golfer, but on this one particular day, he just couldn't do anything right. By the third hole, he was complaining about what he was doing and the way he was shooting, and it just continued on and on throughout the remaining 15 holes. Complaining about this, about that, he was hooking, he was slicing, he couldn't do anything right. And when he stepped aside to bring in his card to the, um, to the clubhouse there, one of his playing partners said to the other, you know, I shot one of my best scores ever today, and yet I couldn't enjoy myself because I had to listen to nothing but complaining. I wish that instead of him complaining about his bad game, he could have been happy for me that I shot a good game. It is easy to put out the lights of God's joy. It is easy to squelch out happiness a cutting word, a, an insult, a derisive sneer can kill joy just as easily as a bucket of water can be quench a fire that it gets poured upon. 
Arthur Clutton Brock, who was for many years art critic for the London Times, wrote about his Christian faith in a book titled, What is the Kingdom of Heaven? He tells of a time he was out on a walk with his babysitter, walking along on a country lane. And at a house just before them, three children were romping around through the yard, playing games and laughing with great delight. They climbed up a small sycamore tree and were gathering leaves and tossing them out into the air. They broke off some tender branches from the top of the tree and gathered leaves. And they, at this time of year, there were some flowers along in the tree at that point in time. And so they pulled some of them off and pulled the leaves and those uh, flowers together like a bouquet of flowers. And when Arthur and his babysitter were walking by, the children ran out to the, into the lane and danced around about them. There was a magical moment of grace and beauty. And then they presented the bouquet of flowers to Arthur with great pomp. But for some reason, Arthur tells us, whether it was fear of these children he did not know or pride from having to accept a gift from them, he just turned and walked away from them. He ran after his sitter and started walking down the road. And then he stopped and looked over his shoulder and he noticed those three children were still there, but the flowers and the leaves were on the ground, the heads were downcast, and the laughter was gone. The joy was gone. Looking back on it later, Arthur says, I felt in that moment that I had turned my back on the kingdom of God. Something had been offered to me in love, and I hadn't taken it. He says years later that the sight of those three disappointed faces haunted him all the rest of his life. John wrote, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We are children of the light. We are the ones on whom God's light shines. We are the ones who can give that light to everyone afflicted with every kind of darkness. So let our light shine. Let it shine now. Let it shine always. Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is What Child Is This? You may find that at number 40 if you have a green hymnal or number 296 if you have a red hymnal. We continue with the prayers of the church. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might live always to the praise of your name. Hear us, O God. Please respond. Your mercy is great. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O God. 
You overflow with grace upon grace, expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority, open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities, protect all those in harm's way, especially in our armed forces and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep, embrace those who feel far off, excluded or defeated, Accompany those living with chronic or invisible illness. Sustain the weak and the weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness, especially our Dean, Darlene, Ray, Cindy, David, Loretta, Kurt, Kelly, Boyd, Bill, Joanne, Philip, Joanne, Matt, Paul, Darlene, Jim, Rita, Peggy, Bill, Diane, Steve, Marianne, Royce, Ashley, Sylvia, Dawn, Emily, Viola, Steve, Julie, Heidi, Dale, David, Sally, Carol, and John. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us together in your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray then together the words of our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain, which you find at number 70 if you have the green hymnal or number 290 if you have the red hymnal. Go Tell It on the Mountain. God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. May God grant you grace and peace at the ending of one year and the beginning of another. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.